QuickBooks Online 2023, sales tax and bank feeds. Get ready to start moving on up with QuickBooks Online 2023. Here we are in our bank feed practice file. We started up in a prior presentation using the 30 day free trial. We also have opened the free QuickBooks Online sample company. If you want the two open at the same time, we suggest using the incognito window or another browser to open the sample company. Support accounting instruction by clicking the link below, giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website, broken out by category, further broken out by course, each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. You can open the incognito window if using Google Chrome by selecting the three dots in the browser, incognito window, typing into the search engine QuickBooks Online test drive. We're using the sample company to compare the accounting view, the one that the bank feeds practice file is in, and the business view, the one the sample company is in. If you want to toggle between the two views, go to the cog up top and switch the view down below. Duplicating some tabs now to put reports in. That's what we do every time. Let's do it this time. Right click it on the tab up top to duplicate it. Right click it on the tab up top to duplicate it. Back to the middle duplicated tab. To the reports on the left hand side, we're going to be opening the balance sheet. The big balance sheet. Where's that located? In the sample company or business view. It's open in the business overview section and then the reports. That's the location in the business view, by the way. Tab into the right, reports on the left. Let's open up the profit and loss as we do every time. Close up the hand boogie, change the range, 010122 tab, 123122 tab, run it to refresh it. Tab into the middle, closing the hand boogie, scrolling up to the top, changing the range, 010122 tab, 123122 tab, running to refresh it okay i'm gonna stop talking like that but there it is let's go to the first tab open the bank feeds like we've been doing every time because we're working on the bank feeds that's under the banking tab banking up top let's close the hand boogie if you're in the business view by the way the bank feeds are in the bookkeeping and then the transaction and the bank transactions a lot of b's involved to find it over there closing the hand boogie all right Let's go back on over. This time we're looking at the sales tax situation. How are sales tax going to be fitting in with the bank feeds? Like normal, taxes throw a wrench into the whole system when we have to deal with the sales tax. You might have a usage tax if you're outside the United States. So let's just, same concept, it's going to mess everything up. And so we're going to have to figure out how do the bank feeds fit into it. Let's take a look at our flow chart to think through that. So the sales tax by concept is a tax on the customer, not really supposed to be on the business itself. It's using the business as the tax collector. So the government's saying, hey, business, you're our tax collector now. We're going to impose the tax on the customer. That means every time we make a sale, we need to determine, is this something that's going to be subject to sales tax? And if it is, we need to collect the sales tax, track the sales tax, and then pay the sales tax to whoever's forcing us to be their collection agent uh, at, at a future point in time. Now, the QuickBooks system has a nice little widget or tool to help us to do that. There's kind of a couple components or three things to keep in mind when setting up the sales tax. One, you gotta turn on the sales tax. You've gotta, in doing so, put the correct items who's where you're subject to the sales tax. Uh, two, and then two, you've got to assign your items to determine which items you're selling are subject to sales tax. Some might not be subject to sales tax. Some might be things, uh, sales of inventory are often more likely subject to sales tax in the United States at least. And then three, are there some customers that are exempt from the sales tax even though uh, other customers may be subject to the sales tax because they're a charity 
or or they're they're not the end user or something like that. Uh, and so those are the three things we got to kind of keep in mind. Now, with regards to bank fees, we we noticed that on the sales side of things, it depends de depends on the industry we're in in terms of how we can deal with the bank fees. Because in the easiest situation, if we're in like gig work or something, we can just basically wait till it clears the bank, record the sales with the deposits. But if we're in a cash register situation, we'll often want to enter the, the information into the sales receipt form, then make the deposit using the bank feeds as more of a check, an internal control, a, a form to help us with the bank reconciliation. And if we're on an accrual system, we would have to invoice receive payment record the deposit the bank feeds typically helping out once again as kind of a check uh and helping us with the reconciliation as opposed to recording the actual transaction now you can you can imagine a situation where you're subject to sales tax using the easiest method over here if you're able to and just waiting till everything clears the bank and then just recording revenue uh, with the deposit form if you're using that system, you can't really use the sales tax widget that's designed to be used within QuickBooks because QuickBooks has designed the system to record sales using the sales receipt and the invoices. If you just record a deposit, you don't have the items. The items are going to be necessary for QuickBooks to try to ta uh, track the sales tax component to it. So you, so you can't really do it with just a deposit form if you're gonna use the full kind of widget system within QuickBooks. Now you could work around that. You could just you could just basically charge people the amount plus the sales tax, and then you can kind of back into how much sales tax you owe based on your, your uh, earnings. And so we might take a look at that in a second, but that's the first thing to note. If you're using the full service system within QuickBooks, then you're gonna to have to use an invoice or a sales receipt to record the transactions and you're gonna to have to set up the items so that you can drive the sales tax that will be recorded at the point of sale. And then we can use kind of the sales tax widget to pay the sales tax at a future point. So let's see how that works. Let's, let's quickly kind of turn on sales tax. I'm gonna right click on the tab up top, duplicate it again. I'm gonna pull that tab over to the left hand side and let's go on to our uh, tax information on the left so we got the tax information on the left i think it's pretty much the same on the business view they got a taxes tab on the business view too so pretty much the same so we're on the sales tax so that's the first tab here it says automatically calculate sales tax for each sale so you can create invoices or receipts to calculate the sales tax rate based on date location type of product and so on we keep your sales tax updated when laws change so one kind of quirk on sales tax in the United States is we it's a state tax, not a federal tax, therefore it can change depending on location. And that can cause complication when you're trying to do sales, you know, in different states or something or e-commerce and that kind of stuff. But in any case, let's use the automatic sales tax here. It says here's the address that's going to be used. So this is the address I typed in. So it's going to try to determine that as the locale for which the sales tax will be subject based on the state and local of that area. And so I'm going to say, okay, tell us. And if you have a different location, that's okay. I'm going to set up like a generic one so you can see how it works too. We calculate sales tax based on what you sell and where you sell it. If you sell multiple locations, we calculate the correct sales tax for each one. So that's great. Do you need to collect sales tax outside of California? So if you have to if you're subject to sales tax outside of one state, that will complicate things a bit. QuickBooks can help to set that up. I'm not gonna get into the detail on that right now. I'm gonna go to the more simple component and just say no, just one state at this point, in my case, California. Looks like you need to pay taxes to just one government. Uh, we call this your tax agency, your tax agency, California Department of Tax and Fee Administration. Sounds very bureaucratic, sounds very California-like. Okay, let's do the next one. So automatic sales tax is all set. So now we can create an invoice if we want. I'm not gonna create an invoice yet, not from here. I'm just gonna close this out. And then it says how often uh, you file taxes. 
you can find this info on your sales tax business registration. If you can't find it or if changed, check out the table. So generally when you set up your sales tax with the government entity, they're going to tell you how often you have to pay the tax. So file filing frequency. So in other words, depending on your location and usually off, also depending on the level of sales you make, then you might have to file quarterly, uh, yearly or monthly. So if you have very little sales, for example, the government say, might say, well, we just, we're just going to make you do it yearly because we don't really care. You don't make that much money. But if you, if you make more money, it's likely that they're going to say, we want you to file quarterly because now it's starting to get significant and we want to make sure that we're getting a piece of your action. And then if you get more money, then they want it monthly because now they're like, yeah, we got to get our hooks deep into your hide this time because you're making some cash over there or whatever. So we got that. So here's the, here's the table that they generate just from the information based on the location. So you probably want to go from the documentation you get. Uh, but, but there's, you know, the, the limits. So average monthly liability, blah, 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 and the filing frequency. So here's the source of it. If you want to, if you want to check out the URL, that's where they're pulling it from. They're saying, I believe let's save it. And so now our sales tax has been set up. So now we've got our tax kind of information up over here. And then you've got your activity that's basically happening, uh, down below and then You've got your economic nexus. So all states have rules. This is kind of neat because it can give you kind of more of the rules and information on a state by state. It's kind of more of an informational type of thing. And then this side, if you needed to edit your sales tax, will give you the tax agency, basically kind of like a vendor that you can edit over here. And then we can add another one. Now I'm going to add another one just because I want to make a generic like 5%. So if you're following along and you're making a generic problem and you don't live in California, uh, then you can make like a generic one here and say, uh, single, I'm just going to say practice tax agency. I'm just going to pick the same agency just, but I'm just going to make it a generic 5% is the point. So I should have the option to put the generic five uh, in place, hopefully when I start doing my sales tax, just so we can make it a generic problem. So it's not a California Beverly Hills <laughs> problem uh, only. Okay, but if you're in California Beverly Hills, you could follow that along too. So that's no problem either. So let's go back and then we're gonna say, then the next step is that we're gonna have to set up our items to calculate the sales tax. Because now if I hit the plus button, when I make an invoice or a sales receipt, invoice, accrual method, sales receipt, if we're on a cash based method, then the system can only apply the tax by the item. So all we have now are these generic items that were imposed or created by QuickBooks. Let's make up our own items. So where are those located? I'm going to say, no, don't save that QuickBooks. If you would open up the ham boogie and those are under the sales on the left hand side all the way to the right you got your product you got your services if you're on the sample company it's in the get paid pay area and then you're down in the products and services and so then in here i'm going to close up the ham boogie and <clears throat> so there's our items that the generic ones they set up to set up a new item we can go to new on the upper right i'm going to set up an inventory item because it's the most complex one and the one most likely subject to sales tax but you could have a non inventory item. That means you're not tracking the inventory in the system. Uh, so it's an inventory thing, but you're tracking it not in the system, possibly tracking it using a periodic system. Service would indicate that it's a service item, no inventory involved. Let's go with inventory because it's the most complex. I'm just going to call this, this inventory <coughs> in, <coughs> inventory sales tax. What is this? inventory sales tax for my example i'm not going to do an sku you can do a picture of it i'm not going to put it into a category initial quantity on hand a zero and then well let's let's put a quantity on hand let's actually put five on hand that's going to make a journal entry putting some of them on hand which will increase inventory the other side going to like opening balance equity most likely and let's put this back in 2022 
and January of it, let's say, and reorder point at zero. Okay, so then inventory, that's good. Description, okay. The sales price, let's say we sell them for 125. Sale of product, that's gonna be the revenue account when we sell it, looks good. Here's the taxable item. So it says here it's taxable. You've got a couple ways that it can determine whether it's taxable based on what you're selling or you can go down here and it just says it's taxable based on location. It's kind of a generic taxable item. So I'll pick that. So that's just gonna subject uh, it to the sales tax. Purchase information, boom, I'm gonna say then we buy them for let's say $50. Cost of goods sold is the expense account. Expensed when we sell it, I'm not gonna have any preferred vendor. Let's save it and close it. Okay, so there's one other thing we gotta think about and that's gonna be the customer if there's any exceptions but before we do, uh, this will be the enough to get us generally going. So if I go on over and I say, let's just make an invoice and say that it's going to be for customer. Let's make it customer two. I'll just make up another customer. Very creatively named customer. If I do say so myself, my creativity is astounding. Astounding. So let's make this, uh, let's make this as of 06, 15, 22, let's say. And then I'm gonna say my inventory item is inventory sales tax, boom. So there it is. So now the tax has been applied. And then down here, it applies the tax based on the location. I gotta I got click off on it so then it does it based on the location. Now we can also then, I can apply my generic 5% that I set up here, generic five, just to make it a generic problem. And you can also change the math down here if you needed to, like if you wanted to make it a generic problem or the math isn't right for whatever reason, you can override it by going into here and then change it. You just have to give it a reason and uh, it'll do that. So that's cool. And so that is that. Now, before I record it, there's one other thing that could throw off the whole system and that would be if the customer for whatever reason uh, is not subject to sales tax so the item would indicate it's subject to sales tax but the customer is not or possibly the customer is subject to a different location kind of sales tax and so then you can set that up when you set the customer up so let's check that out i'm going to close this and go back into the sales center sales center let's go into the customers and there's customer uh, number two that we set up. Customer number two. And let's go ahead and edit customer numero dos. And down below, we've got the taxing information. So right here it says this customer is tax exempt. So you can make it tax exempt or the sales tax rate. Again, you can assign one of the two, you know, I've got these two rates that we assigned. So we could make this customer always be picking up the 5% instead of it being based on location here. Or we can say that they're not subject to sales tax, possibly for one of the reasons listed below. Let's say they're a charitable organization, for example, uh, and then say, save it. And then I can go back into making an invoice for customer number two customer number two and then i can say that this is going to be inventory sales tax item it's still subject to tax over here but no tax is being calculated so if you see that happening and you're like what in the world man i've got the tax up here nothing's calculating down here why possibly your customer is exempt from taxes even though the item says it's taxable okay so let's go back to what it was before closing that back out closing that back out and then I'm gonna say, edit this and say, you're not special customer too. You're not special, your charity's a scam. I'm taxing you like everyone else. We're gonna say they're subject to tax, just like everyone else. Spent all that money, that churtle money on your vacation, I saw that. So now I'm gonna go back on up and say invoice and say, let's say this is customer number two again. And so this is actually a fairly complex transaction that this records now. And so what's this going to do when we when we record the sales tax? It's gonna 
there's inventory involved so there's a lot going on it's an invoice it's going to increase the uh accounts receivable it's going to increase the accounts receivable by the full amount including the sales tax let's make it the generic five generic five including the the sales tax to 131.25 revenue is going to go up by the 125 the difference is going to go into the to the uh sales tax payable of 625 it's not going to hit the income statement that's kind of weird because you can see you can imagine it why don't i just record income as 131.25 and then when i pay the sales tax i record a sales tax expense because the sales tax is not in theory subject to you your, your business it's it's you're just a collection agency it's not part of your revenue and it's not going to be part of your expenses that's the idea it's going to go on the it's going to go on the on 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 a, a balance sheet account and then also uh inventory is going to go down by i think we said 50 dollars the amount that was driven by the item here for the cost and we're going to have the cost of goods sold go up the net impact on net income will be 125 minus the cost of goods sold which i believe was the 50 and we also have a sub ledger for for the customer two uh, which will track the accounts receivable that we'll need to collect in the future and a sub ledger for the inventory item now because we're tracking it on a perpetual inventory system tracking it by unit so let's save it close it and check all that out and see if that is indeed the case going to the to the balance sheet running it and then scroll down so now we've got the accounts receivable so if, if i go into the ar there it is and that's for the full amount of uh hold on a second that doesn't look like the right one that's not the right one at all let me change the range up here did i put it in for 2023 2023 boom there it is let's bring that back to 2022 i'm going to change the date going into that one let's bring this back you're too far in the future you're too far in the future we're working in the past man so there let's do that let's save it all right so there it is 131.25 going back the other side's on the income statement running it so now we've got the sale of product going into it there is the 125 scrolling back up the other side is in the sales tax and this is where our focus is of course where they put this long account name california department that's because you might have multiple sales tax you would think you would just call it sales tax payable a liability because you owe it in the future but they put this long name because you might have multiple people that you might be paying the sales tax to there's the 625 and inventory is going down so inventory went up when when i added like the beginning balance of inventory and then it went back down by i believe this uh 50 this one right here that one right there so scrolling back up and then the cost of goods sold over here on the income statement is affected and we're also tracking the inventory and the sub ledger for the customer so the point is the main point we're looking at of course is the fact that i had to enter an invoice or sales receipt and the item in order for me to get this uh this payable to track the payable that i'm in the future going to then pay with the sales tax widget so we can imagine after a month or after a quarter or after a year we're going to have to take the money that we collected from the sales tax which is going to accumulate in the liability account we'll use the sales tax widget over here which is going to be in the sales tax area to then pay the sales tax uh using using the the, the pay the sales tax which is a little bit difficult to kind of view in real time because uh i mean it's, it's difficult when you're trying to do it like in the past in a practice problem because the sales tax runs kind of real time but it'll generate a check when you have an amount that you owe here you can generate a sales tax check based on you know what you owe and that will decrease the sales tax here uh when you pay it so the point is if i if i look at my flow chart over here i have to then enter my sales tax if i'm going to use that widget method the whole cool little widget thing within quickbooks i have to enter my sales using items using invoices and sales receipts because those are the things that help me to track the sales tax 
So I can't really just wait till something clears the bank if I want to use that cool little tool. Now you might say, well, wait a second. I don't want to turn on. I mean, I want to just make my bookkeeping as easy as possible and just wait till something clears the bank. How can I work my sales tax into a nice, easy system like that? Let's say you're just, you're just going to make sales. I'm not even going to track the customers or whatever. I'm just going to make the sales. And once they clear the bank, I'm just going to record it, you know, as revenue. Well, then what you might end up doing then is to open up a trusty uh, Excel worksheet and you can say, okay, well, that just means that when you make the sales, you're going to want to include the sales tax in the sales. So I'm just going to show you just a quick little worksheet on that and just to give you an idea of how you might do that. So let's just say, for example, that, that let's say you had sales just to get a, an idea of this of $500 and the sales tax rate, let's say is at 5%, 0.05%. Let's make this bold. And I'm gonna make that a percent number percentifying it. So if I multiply this out, let's add decimals to this whole thing. Add in some decimals. All right, then I'm gonna percentify underline and this is gonna be this times this. And so that's going to be your sales tax, right? And then, so the total price is going to be this times this. Well, hold on a sec. That's not right. It's going to be this plus this. So if we sold something for $500, then the total price plus the sales tax is going to be the 525. We can get there quicker to the sales price by saying, okay, well, if the sales is going to be 500, then I'm going to say, so 100% plus, plus rate sales tax, right? Sales tax rate, 100% plus sales tax rate, which is going to be equal to one plus 0.05, one plus 0 0.05, 0 0.05, which is 1.05, or if I make it a percent, 105%. Underlining that, that will get us to our sales price, right? That's going to get us to our sales price. Now, the tricky thing is if you made a bunch of sales, uh, then then you would think that you could you could say, okay, if I made a bunch of sales, and all my, all my sales sales including tax were at this amount 525 and then you know the the thug comes into my place and says you need to pay me protection money you need to pay me protection money of five percent that's the government and we're like ah oh, god here we go again okay we'll pay you the five percent right if you're gonna protect us just like you did with that COVID. You shut us down. You shut me down. <laughs> Anyways, I'm going to say 0.05. Let's make this a percent. And then you would think that you could just say 525 times the, the 5%, right? But that's not exactly right. You'd be overpaying the sales tax uh, if, you were to, if you were to do that. So you can't take your in sales and multiply it times the 5% because the sales that you made already, you know, include the sales tax. So if you're taking your end sales, like all your sales are at the 525, then how can you back into the sales tax? So if you make all your sales, you can make, you can imagine you make all of your sales and instead of, instead of recording this liability account here of the sales tax liability, as you make the sales, you're just going to record everything to revenue, which includes the sales tax portion of the sale, which means you're overstating the revenue account. But then you're going to make an adjustment at the end of the period for your sales tax, right? You're going to back out the sales tax. And then so when you back out the sales tax, you can't just take your sales times the 5%. It, it has to be something, you know, you got your equation. Your equation is, well, I know what, I know what my... I know what my, uh, let's just copy this equation over here. Like here's my sales, here's my that, and then here's my uh, total price. 
So it's the same thing, but I'm really kind of backing into this number, right? Because I know that this is the 1.05 or 105 percent. I can percentify that, and the sales and the total price I know is this 525. So I'm basically backing into the sales number. So you can write out your algebraic equation, which would be something like this would be x. Right, so it's gonna be X uh, times 1.05 equals the 525 and you're backing into X. So if you do that, I'm gonna say this is gonna be equal to this divided by this and there's your 500 and you can double check it by multiplying it out this way and then you get the right amount. Otherwise, and then, you know, so, so if that's the, so the actual tax you're paying is 25 not the 26 25 so what you'll end up doing is when you whenever you make the sales and you record the sales with the deposit like the, the accounts that will be affected as cash is going to be going up by the full amount the 525 that you're recording and you're in trying to include the sales tax in the sales price you're just going to say here's the price plus it includes the sales tax right and then you're just going to record the whole thing as sales because you're just going to record it as sales when it clears the bank then you're going to have your overstated statement of sales when you pay the sales tax then you're going to say okay then i'm just going to reduce sales which is unnatural that's you don't usually reduce sales but but we're going to do it here because we overstated the sales and we're trying to make a simple system and then the other side is going to go to cash so then sales will go back down to where it should be which would be this minus the 25 the 500 instead of the 525 so you can so if you're on a very simplified kind of system and you have to deal with sales tax then the bottom line is you might just include the sales tax in the price of the stuff you're selling and then just make sure that when you're calculating the sales tax you're not just calculating it based on the total sales when you're paying the mobster that comes in and says that you got to pay them protection money you're not just going to take it on the total sales item here that mobster being you know the government right you got to instead uh, make sure that you're properly calculating the tax backing into the sales amount otherwise you're going to overpay uh, <clears throat> the the sales tax and then you can and then when you rec when you pay the tax instead of paying down the liability you're in essence reducing the sales back down to where it should be if you're not including the tax because you can imagine a situation where you're going to say well that's sales and maybe you think the other side should be sales sales tax expense right that's what you might think it should go to it would go there if you thought of the sales tax as an ordinary and necessary business expense and the sales revenue as revenue so you could do that too but but that's not something you want to report on like your tax return or anything like sales tax expense because it looks like because it's not supposed to be an income statement item right the, the idea of the sales tax is the is it's not hitting the income statement so that's why you'd reduce kind of revenue with it okay that's the general idea with the sales tax